Chateau Sabelle in the Dordogne department of the southwest of France. A small market town with a variety of traditional shops selling local delicacies. It is surrounded by some of the best countryside France has to offer. So it's easy to see why around 100 expats now live here. Among them, Alison and Richard Haylock. Alison and Richard were fed up of their old life in the chilly Scottish borders, so traded it in for a new one here. The French like the outdoors, and I think that's, that's part of their psyche. We were to picnic on Saturday, and it was an absolute delight. Richard and Alison have spent the last five months turning this traditional French townhouse into a three-bed B&B. But they've never done anything like this before. So now they've invited family to stay the night to see what they're doing wrong. I'd like to think that all my children have been brought up to speak their minds. So if I say, what do you think of this? Is it working? They're not going to tell me, yes, it is, if it isn't. The Haylock's guest house is the only B&B in the village. It has three guest rooms, each with their own ensuite. Two are now finished. Well, almost. That's a slight problem. <laughs> but what we've got to do is get a very much heavier shower head, apparently, and um, think about it. But I have to warn people before they get in. If you laugh at me anymore, I could collapse. <laughs> Maybe next door will be better. Twice. <laughs> it's all right when you're in it, but when you're not in it, <laughs> excuse me, I'm going to go and get changed. <laughs> the Haylock's first guests are just hours away. And that shouts in hell of everything being done. There's still uh, an open saw on the coffee table in there with a three year old coming in. Uh, there are tools, nails, everything left there. This is the final straight for the Haylock's. Okay, my sweet, see you soon. But they've run out of time. God, this place is a nightmare for young children. I'm a teacher. I have a mother of five, and I'm this house is just a permanent hazard at the moment. Screwdrivers, wire strippers. Their guinea pig guests have arrived. <laughs> Today is the first time Alison has seen her son Peter since they moved to France. It's been such a long time. I'm so Thanks. pleased. I'm so pleased to see you. And she's about to be introduced to the very latest Greetings, member of the Haylock clan. Oh, you're... Six month old Evie. <laughs> oh dear. Hi. Hi, little one. Your room's ready. Fantastic. <laughs> you want to see our room? We've got to have a look. Yeah? Come on, man. Oh, wow. Oh, brilliant. What do you think of the room, Noah? Do you like your room? <laughs> Thanks, stunning. Really nice. Yeah, done a good job. It's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely big enough for a family as well, so it's good. It's the next morning, and after spending the night here, Alison's family have pointed out a few issues. It's done what we wanted it to, and that it's picked up problems with the showers. Well, we knew about that, but one of them, I think, is the head is leaking. The other thing is that Amy and Peter, who share a wall, reckon that they can hear each other quite clearly. So I need to talk to our builder about some soundproofing or how that can best be done. Will we take young honeymoon couples? Probably not. Um, let's hope all ours are late middle age and past it. I mean, give them a comfortable night's sleep and a decent wash in the morning, that's all. And the over-friendly welcoming committee is a potential problem for the B&B. But Alison has a plan. That's Hugo trying to get in when he gets shut out. Right, which is OK, because the door's going and we'll have to think of something else. But this is my Hugo prevention device. So hopefully we might get a bit of peace. It's a short-term solution, but with a real booking now in the diary, will this be enough to keep the dogs away from the paying public? <laughs> A month ago, Alison and Richard Haylock invited their family to test-run their B&B in the town of Mahoy-Sabelle. 
It's quite like this. It is, isn't it? But now they are counting down to their first booking. We are opening on Friday the doors to our very first guest, which is very exciting. We hope to open in April, and it simply hasn't happened. We haven't been able to get the work done. We have two really quite lovely rooms ready for guests. Almost. Um, and we've got to take advantage of the summer market. We can't wait any longer. We really have to open our doors to the public, who I'm sure will be clamouring at it and going, let us in, let us in. Following family feedback, Alison and Richard are making last-minute changes to room number one. Don't push. They want it to be perfect for their first guest. That's not level, is it? It'll do. I think these lamps need swapping over the ones next door because they're red and they don't go with the pink curtains. They go fine. Well, we've got green ones next door. They'd be better. Darling, I'm busy. All right. OK. You've asked me to do some things. You want to do some other things, that's fine, but don't let, stop me doing what I am doing. Between the months of June and September, there is an average of just five days' rainfall here. And temperatures are regularly above 30 degrees. That's almost twice the average of the UK. But this year, the area is also experiencing a heat wave, and the searing temperatures make the simplest task hard work. Oh, dear. Not good. Not a good look. Alison is missing a few home comforts. Well, normally you get somebody who comes around with a bucket and a ladder, all enterprising, and says, here, can I do your windows, love? And you say, yeah. And they charge you for it, you wouldn't disappear. And no B&B &B room is complete without a full-length mirror. Not difficult. I need a drill. That's plasterboard. How hard can it be to clean a window? I mean, how hard? Blimey. That's not plasterboard, then. Uh, jury's out on that one, I would say. <laughs> well, it's better than it was. You're right there. The Halox b and has a total of three ensuite bedrooms, and now room one is finally ready for guests. As far as I'm concerned, it is drink o'clock, on account of the fact that it is now quarter to six. Now, at last, Alison and Richard can start earning some money. We've only got two rooms ready, not the three that we hoped, but we'll carry on working on the third room, autumn and winter, when it gets a bit quieter. But right now, we have to maximise the market as it stands. First guest, very exciting. I'm not saying nothing. He's a totally different character to me. So what he does is totally different to what I'm doing. And the way I act with my customers and play around with them and joke with them, you know, you've got to be able to switch it on and switch it off on the boat. And I do that quite good on the boat. But you can't learn something like that overnight. I don't think you better do it. The summer season in the French Dordogne. And Alison and Richard Haylock's first paying guest is on his way to their new B&B. He's also ordered a dinner at 25 euros, so that means Alison has to prepare a meal. Nearly an hour before he arrives, if he's on time. He might be early, might be late. I am so thirsty. On top of all the pressure and stress, there's also a huge coincidence in the mix. It turns out that I know the guy that's coming. So it's quite alarming in some ways. Um, we've not spoken to each other for nigh on 50 years. With their guest imminent, Alison has one final unexpected problem to solve. The current problem the mattress is not secured in any way, shape or form to the bed. And it just floats on top of it and you can push it. If I was sleeping on this bed, I, I would feel much more secure if it would just stay still. I am 
tying the mattress to the bed frame with a piece of string. We're not perfect, but we're opening for business because we want to open for business. We can't just sit around and wait until next year. We, we have to get going. Because um, that's what we're here for, to run a B&B. &B. But the time is up. Their first booking has arrived. There's a Porsche. Eek. Julian, one-way street. Hello, mate. Okay. You've just driven down a one-way street. So? I've <laughs> arrived. What word do you want? Hello, Porsche. I'm Alison. I'm very, very pleased Hello, to meet Alison. you. I've heard you have got a lot to catch up on, so tonight we'll, we'll leave you in here with, with oh, Richard. Okay. So with plenty to talk about, it's straight to dinner. And it's a good start. The guest has wolfed down his first course. Julian said it's the best fish soup he's ever had. Thank you. So on to the next. Ossobuco, or veal stew with rice. I might have overestimated the quantity. I'm so sorry. So please just leave it. You don't have to force yourself to eat it all, I promise you. It's Alison's first dinner service, so what does Julian think? Mm, this is delicious. The importance of today is huge because we came over here to run a bed and breakfast. And my confidence is quite easily dented. I'm hoping that if he's got anything negative to say, he'll feel, one, able to say it, and two, in a way that I can simply say, right, I'll put that right. This has been a huge emotional and financial investment for Alison and Richard. But after his stay, what will Julian think of the Haylocks B&B? See all that and more every weekday at the same time. Over on More for tonight at nine, new and exclusive Amanda Lamb is selling houses as three Derby owners snoop on each other's spaces. Next this evening here on Channel 4, come dine with me. It's 100% fresh and brand new.